It sounds like an adventure. I'm shocked you beat me here. Oh, you found the books. I kind of screwed it up. That's what I said. So wait, where are you going? Well, I mean, it's a big question, right? We could use it as a cutting board. That's it. Final said. Gods, they're just like us. Right, Doran? We're poor. Sorry. Hey, up, dummy. I know what I'm good at. See? Deadstone Clef on page 53. You're talking about me, right? We'll help you. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, well, well, welcome to the Copper Cup, Mari. To those we've met and to those we've lost. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not looking for money. Welcome back to Dice Shame. This is Season 2, Episode 1, A Fresh Start. MVP this week is Roanoke, who's been live blogging their listen on our Discord. Thanks for joining us, Roanoke. Thanks, Roanoke. This week, we'd like to celebrate Dice Shame officially joining the Rusty Quill Podcast Network. Woo! We are so proud to count ourselves among the incredible shows already on the network, and we're looking forward to saying hello to some new listeners. If this is the first time you're joining us, this is a serialized actual play podcast, so you may prefer to start at episode one. Or not, your choice. Regardless, thank you, Rusty Quill, for adding us to your stable of shows. All right, should we get down to business? Let's do it. Welcome to episode one of season two Ooh. of Dice Shame. Hey. <laughs> My name is Joe Guthrie, and I'm the DM of this lovely actual play podcast, which is increasingly loosely based around the Dungeons and Dragons Storm King's Thunder <laughs> campaign. Increasingly loose? <laughs> I'm wildly proud to announce that we're the newest member of the Rusty Quill Network of Podcasts. Hell yeah. yeah. If you're new to the show, you might prefer to start at the actual episode one because because there's a ton of amazing content to absorb. But if you just hate that idea for some reason, this is a great place to start. If you're impatient and enjoy walking in movies halfway through, <laughs> like a child who doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> We're going to make it easier for you by introducing ourselves here for a minute. Folks, let's just go around the table. Hi, my name is Harlan Guthrie. I play red-handed Robin, but in real life, I do a bunch of audio work, and I edit this show, so I'm going to make myself sound really good during this <laughs> intro. <laughs> what kind of effects are going to be here? It's going to be a whole other level. Mm -hmm. yeah. I really enjoy uh, long walks on the beach, mm -hmm. and, you know, my episode one intro was terrible as well, so this will just be that. I should listen back. I don't remember what I say. Uh, but that's the reality of me. <laughs> but yeah, I make a podcast called Malevolent. It's not drama also on the rusty cool network if you like spooky things check that out because it's pretty spooky uh but for now i'm playing this and i'm having a damn good time doing it oh that's nice to hear yeah I'm glad hi uh i'm rob diabald i'm an engineer in real life working in the glamorous world of wastewater um oh <laughs> i played jack page the scion of the house of wands a fabulous wizard half elf dude and you have new glasses I do. Yeah, you're looking great, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, mm. I uh... describe it more is that for a the audience. Shirt too? <laughs> this is an audio medium, and uh, you've got chops going as well, Rob. I have chops going. They're mutton chops. They're like the, the quite... face is going out of control. It's true. Getting quite impressive, actually. <laughs> you just got roasted for no reason. Yeah. No, your you face could be... is out of control. Whatever you're doing over there you. on your face. He yeah. said it was out of control. I said I like them. <laughs> My name is Alex Guthrie. I am the uh, third Guthrie now in this podcast. So Ooh. now we officially outweigh the non-Guthries in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I am by day an insurance broker. Yes. This is why I Burn. do D&D <laughs> in my off time. Because in Dungeons and Dragons, I am this dwarven warrior fighter named Doran Actul Iron Fist. Is that German for warning? Uh, I don't know. No, it's a, it's a dwarven name, not German. <laughs> uh, Doran is the son of Dwalin, who is the father of Funden, who was the father of Farin, and his father, Boren. So I'm in a long line of dwarves. Boring. As you Isn't all know, right? <laughs> Uh, Doran's an experienced warrior and soldier, uh, recognized for his involvement in famous battles. Uh, he was taught from a young age to be a skilled blacksmith, and he recently lived a humble life deep in his homeland of the Great Peak Mountains. Aww. Who wrote that biography? Was that, was that <laughs> no, Doran I had writing to. about himself? Or? That was me. That was oh. me a long time oh, ago. Alex. That was, that was Alex. Yeah. Yes. Oh. 
<laughs> Alex, Whoa. the insurance, the insurance alter ego can write. Yes, on yes. company time, it's really very well. <laughs> 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 it's on the letterhead from the desk of <laughs> yes. son of Boren. Got to call Vista Print. <laughs> Uh, hello, uh, my name is Alex Nursall, and I am the second Alex on the podcast. Good luck with that. <laughs> and uh, I play Mari Mian, who is the uh, water genasi druid. On the show, I am kind of a mystery because I am the newest member of the cast. Uh, so everyone else knows as much as you guys do. And, but who uh, are you in real life? In real yes. life? I also work in audio. I am a <laughs> casting director and voice director, and uh, I work on the podcast uh, Park Till Haunt, which is a horror mm. fiction podcast that I uh, co-created, co-write, and am also on as an actor. And it's very fun. Go give it a listen if you feel like spooky stuff. Absolutely. Do it, Do it cowards. Stream Park Till Haunt <laughs> <laughs> on my SoundCloud. <laughs> As you may have guessed from my change of last name, I'm married to the incredible Harlan Guthrie. Aww. That's me. I love d and I'm also a blood scientist. I do blood bank technology um, by day and by night. Not a vampire, hashtag. Yes. No. Do That's not. exactly what a vampire uh, would say, though. I study blood all night yeah. long. Blood scientist is the coolest job. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, it's, it's, it's the pause before I'm a blood scientist. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> this is how I draw your blood. Give me your arm. Right. Hey, Joe, I'm just going to have to get you to sample. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Uh, what, what? People uh, love just it when enjoying you make my that juice sound, box. right? On podcasts. Ah, whatever. Don't get used to it. I don't really know how else to describe myself. Uh, is GM that kind of sad? That people are like, well, this is what I do for a living. Mm. It is sad. Or is that just kind of a symptom of being like mid 30s? No, you're great. Mm. All right, cool. Let's not depress this intro. <laughs> <laughs> not depress. We Let's don't need to get honest. too introspective yet. Nobody we can save really that for episode to three or four. We're... I really enjoy um, solving mysteries. Like, I like uh, escape mm. rooms and I like escape room related board games. <laughs> 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 I mean, I tell people that I'm into F1 and their eyes just glaze over. So I'm like, oh. I just did it one second ago. Yeah. Like, we should redo this and just tell all lies. Uh, by day, I'm a vehicle mechanic. Uh, That's right. I do. I do uh, work I'm a on pilot. Hold on, I want to hear Alex name one thing about a car. <laughs> it's still losing up to blood scientist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> blood. You scientist. should have picked like vehicle reanimator. Like you make yeah, transformers. Yeah, yeah. I'm a yeah. Frankenstein doctor <laughs> by day. I enjoy digging by up brains. By night, I'm an actual Frankenstein. By night, I'm a Frankenstein. <laughs> I love that, by the way. When you say that, Frankenstein, then people go, oh, it's, um, it's actually... actually the name of the doctor. And you go, oh. That's how you figure out who you yeah, shouldn't be having a yeah, conversation with. I mean, there's... That's when you realize you're at D&D table. There's <laughs> levels of pedantry, for sure. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So this is Rob as he scratches out, correct them after the stream on one use <laughs> yeah, of I mean, Rob's at the top. Don't, don't need to do this. Rob's just furiously tweeting <laughs> on stream currently. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never guess what they said on this episode. There's of times Shane. to be a pedant where it's kind of fun and interesting. And it's times where you're just trying to be a jerk who's wanting up, one-upping somebody. And don't do that. Yeah. I think an amazing question is like, what is like the most pointless thing you're pedantic about? Because mine's like the difference between a gargoyle and a grotesque. Oh. What? Clarify. One, a gargoyle, to be a gargoyle, also has to be a water spout. If it's just oh. like a little spooky guy on the side of a building, it's a grotesque. It's just a statue. Wow. So if it doesn't have that water spout, it's not a gargoyle. I think you just broke a lot of people's worlds. <laughs> there was a TV show about it that was totally wrong. So that, yeah, right? they weren't spitting that water at all. <laughs> it should have been called grotesque. Usually. They were fucking spitting water at all. What the hell is this bullshit? <laughs> Dear <These> Disney. Grotesques. <laughs> Dear fucking In the 90s. How dare you? And that's the most unrealistic thing about... <laughs> yeah, the, no the Hunchback Notre Dame lied. The entire thing, yeah. it's a lie. <laughs> they weren't gargoyles. gargoyles. They were grotesques. Yeah, of course there are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm. Of course. They should have been leaking water at all times. Anyway, should we play some fucking D&D? &D? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. Ow! Yeah. The continent of Faerun is ancient and wild. To the east, a sprawling desert churns and shifts, deceptive and unknowable. To the west... Its sister, a vast sea, waves like the deep blue dunes, 
and just as impenetrable, just as mysterious. The lords of these boundaries and of the lands between them have been warring since the writing of history began. Great worms, primordial dragons, possessed of profound magic and cunning, and their natural adversaries, their only true and worthy opponent, giant kind. Matched not only in size, but also in avarice, ambition, and power, giants and dragons have rent the earth and bled the skies out of their hate for one another, over and over again through the centuries. There's a chill on the air now, the familiar taste of this feud. Even the simple, small folk of Faerun can tell something is happening. Standing on the frosted deck of a tall ship coming into the harbor of Waterdeep in the late afternoon, even among those who have seen it a hundred times, the view is one of the marvels of Faerun. A cosmopolitan city composed of soaring cathedrals, strong defensible walls studded with busy markets, four-story shops and apartments that lean conspiratorially over alleys slushed with filth and grime, and the paned glass solariums of stately villas. Most buildings turn their fair faces toward the west, out to the sea spray and to the setting sun, painting the splendid place in dusty orange hues. One such building is similarly painted, seeming to blush with afternoon light, a three-story tavern on a corner overlooking the dock ward in the harbor. Its windowsill planters are clotted with snow. Icicles hang from the tile hung above the front door, the sign painted in a confident hand and showing the nine of cups the Copper Cup Fest Hall. The door swings open to permit a customer and we see that the Copper Cup interior has been decorated for the midwinter season with hundreds of taper candles on standing candelabras mounted in pools of cooled wax onto attractive glass dishes clustered in groups of five and eight and 14 and a server is moving around lighting them, the glow gradually competing with the horizontal light of sunset. The bar is somewhat busy, though the staff has the casual competence that comes from being well-trained and well-paid, the happy babble of clients creating its own contented hum. Through another set of doors, into a warm back parlor, a quartet of musicians is chatting with one another, their instruments slung casually across their bodies or close at hand, one sitting down to mend a broken string. Across the room, we see two men regarding a stack of paintings leaned up against the wall. The human man, Torin Cheldrick, early 40s, with lovely chestnut hair and a dusting of carefully groomed stubble, moves with grace and confidence. This is his fest hall. He's thoughtfully pawing through the paintings and selects one, dragging it out and holding it up to you for your inspection, Jack. Rob, who are we looking at? Yeah, you are looking at famed archaeologist uh, Lord Johannes Eveben Page, known as Jack Page to his <laughs> friends, the half-elf scion of the House of Wands, turning to his partner and best friend, Taran. I'm sorry, it's a forgery. Like you can, you can, you can tell. No. No, I, this the merchant assured me this was authentic. See here in the corner, the signature so distinct it says Regan. Right. No, and 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 it's a perfect copy, but you have to look at the ink. It's it's silver dust, and they just Regan was not using that kind of ink. You and you can tell because of the way it's bleeding in the page. It was put down afterwards and lacquered over to make it look old. I. Ugh. But are any of these real? I mean, we should find out the forger's name because they themselves are an artist. This is pretty great. The frames are great. <laughs> They're like <laughs> they're gilt. I will say that Jack Page is a tall-ish, five-six, fairly lanky, mid-fifties half-elf. He's uh, dressed for field work for a noble from Waterdeep. That means a shirt that's way too fancy, and a tie, and a jacket, and <laughs> he's got some adventuring gear always close by, bags, and a book and a wand that's never too far, and of course his golden retriever familiar running around his legs and through the bar trying to get scraps from anybody who could, who can sort of sneak something off of i i have this piece too it uh, i think this is a nebrian blasso i think the colors are lovely but he only paints gourds oh this no this is a fabulous gourd but it does leave you feeling 
<laughs> somehow warm and fall like and certainly in midwinter it makes me wish we were a, f- a few months earlier so Torin nods a bit distractedly I, I i trust you'll make the right call jack excuse me j- for just a minute i'm so sorry yeah and his eyes dart sideways toward the sound of gruff cursing and the grating teeth of a saw in hardwood by the roaring hearth Carpenter's tools are set out in a jumble, and sawdust has created small drifts here and there as an ill-planned bit of DIY furniture repair is going on. Torin's attention is pulled here as inexorably as a trout on a line, and he stands over a short figure who is bent over some work. Alex, who do we see? You're talking about me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how, how tall the water ganas is, the, that's all. You would be the short character who's yeah. doing a bad job Short Alex and tall Alex. Part. Yeah, as I say, you do realize I'm a blacksmith, not a carpenter, right? Okay, well, so. Well, that's why you're doing a bad job. Right. <laughs> so, bent down over top of this, uh, you know, half-built bench is this dirty, very smelly dwarf, and he is butchering this whatever he's building. I don't understand. This is ridiculous. Nothing here works the same way it does in a forge. You can't mash it. You can't bend it. You can't heat it. This is just silly. You gotta Dorian, cut everything here. I just asked you to even the legs a little bit. Well, and I started on that one's corner. One's like three inches. <laughs> one's like ten. And, and then it went too short, and so I had to move over to this corner, and, and then I was sitting on it, and I felt a little too tall so then i thought well if we bring them all down well i mean it'll make a nice footstool jack's just cramming like coasters under it yeah. <laughs> i think you're at a kelsey's <laughs> doran stands up and before Torin is this four foot six muscle built reddish brown hair you know kind of brown skin dwarf and um you know his hair is 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 all matted and full of dirt and dried blood and his face we've been here for a week you've been here for a couple (laughs) days for sure Uh, self-care and you know don't bathe as soon as as soon as doran bathes you know he's gonna get messy the very next minute so he's like a toddler (laughs) and then today he's been emptying out the the fireplace why do the dishes or laundry anyways they just gonna get right? dirty again it... exactly i know this guy exactly. i do appreciate your help well as long as you appreciate it i mean i i i, I kind of screwed it up i mean i'll tell you what next time i'm around a forge i'll put you together a really nice custom steel bench what was this was this a bench or was this a table it was at one point. It was a bench. Yes, it was oh. a bench. Well, you know what? Okay, I will. I'll talk to Mascar and see if we can't get it. I'm, I'm sure refurbished at some point. And it's like this beautiful antique piece. <laughs> and the, the legs are just <laughs> fucking my mid-century gone modern now. furniture. There's a door propped open that leads out back, where we see a narrow alley hung with a few lanterns. Most of the slush out here is cleared away by the industrious employees of the tap house, and several of the kitchen staff are relaxing out here in the cold air before the evening dinner rush. An arrow sings down the length of the alley and embeds itself deeply into the far side where a wooden door has been defaced with simple daubed paintings, the arrowhead quivering in the pupil of the eye of a cartoonish, slavering frog hemoth. The creature who loosed the arrow stands cavalierly beside the cooks, knocking another arrow. Harlan, who is this creature? This is Red-Handed Robin, a tabaxi. However, he has no ears, no tail, and he looks more like a fox than anything else. (laughs) Why he has no ears and no tail is a mystery to this day. They are clearly severed from long ago. 150 episodes later and you'll no learn one, eventually no when you've earned it. No one's fucking asked you. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is wearing a metal pauldron over his left arm, the one that holds the bow forward, his right to hang back. He's wearing similar garb to that of Kevin Costner in Prince of Thieves, <laughs> a long scarf, sort of green Robin Hood-esque clothing, uh, a breastplate, as well as a long flowing robe with patches, some of which are missing. And he turns towards one of the kitchen staff and says, "Ah, that's three silver, because I hit it in the eye. This is not fair. 
What do you mean not fair? You made the bet. You said the eye. Pick another place. Pick anything. Up there, he points, there's a balcony with a flower pot just barely balanced on the edge of a railing, maybe 60 meters away. Oh, you want me to hit that flower pot? Double or nothing. 60 whole meters away. Red like turns around and like makes a face. Oh, I don't know if I can do it. He turns and aims the arrow directly at the pot and then aims it much higher and lets the arrow loose. (laughs) And it totally misses. Just Everyone bursts into like roars of applause and anger. Obviously, other people were placing bets on whether or not you would be achieving this target. All right, pay up, you. I guess I did. I, I guess I did. Oh, wait a minute. And Red gestures up to the top as you see the arrow coming back down down uh, from the, the trajectory that he shot right, at. Like bottom <laughs> of the parabola. And it yeah. hits right through the base of the flower pot, pinning it, but like dirt falls down the side, just littering down to the alley. And then the whole thing just topples over and smashes. Ah, <gasps> Guess I didn't miss after all. Pay up, dummy. The inner door to the back salon is kicked open and a shaft of dying light illuminates the mahogany colored fur of a female tabaxi. She clearly resembles Red in a familial way, but with the intelligent swiveling ears and a lashing tail, and a pink scar still freshly lanced on her cheek and jaw. She's wearing a light blue tunic tucked into leather riding pants with a strung bow and quiver on her back, a long belt knight sheathed at her waist, and several heavy-looking books tied in a bundle in her arms. I was able to find most of the ones on the list, uh, except the topography of southern Faerun, uh, the extended travel journals of Busyfiz, the well-heeled and uh, bird's-eyed view, the guide to the Grey Peaks, which is apparently an extremely rare volume. Oh, you found the books. Oh my gosh, Dorn, what are you doing to that chair? Well, I was just trying to uh, balance it out by... Where's Dad? What do you say we just remove the legs altogether and we could use it as a cutting board? (laughs) (laughs) Dora walks up with like this like stubby cutting board thing. Mm -hmm. This table with two inch legs. She looks over at Jack as Red comes in through the door. Hey, you missed it, B. Remember yesterday when we pulled that old hustle, you coming in and doing the thing like you didn't know what you were talking about, and then we made double the money? I made half as much without you. Where were you? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Jack had me running all over town doing... What? Jack- See, Deadstone Clef on page 53. It's right Jack, here. She's an adventurer of her own merit. Stop giving her duties like she works for you. No, I, Did he I, at least pay you this time? He didn't, but I appreciate that I'm contributing, you know? I said that I wanted to come and be an adventurer. Be and I... an adventurer isn't doing Jack's bidding. That's our job. You <laughs> should be having more fun. <laughs> An aproned hostess enters and gets Torin's attention. Uh, excuse me, sir, there's uh, someone to see you. A woman named Mari? I've set her at the bar and left her with a drink. Shall I ask her to wait? Mari? Did you say Mari? Uh, yes, sir. I... C- Jack! Yeah? How are you doing? What? <laughs> Wait, you said Maori! Oh! <laughs> Alex, who do we see sitting at the bar? There is a tall water genasi just sitting at the bar. She's got a small drink in front of her, and she's just kind of swishing it around, just kind of waiting for someone to come in. She knows she's looking for somebody, but she's not sure who he is. She's blue-skinned with dark gray hair, wearing a long mid-thigh like leather coat that's open and uh, tall leather boots. And uh, everything's got like a little bit of floral embroidery on it. And uh, she's just sitting there waiting and there's a little thing of uh, unopened flowers in a vase and she's just kind of fussing with them, causing them to open. Oh, that's cool. Every time she sort of pick ones up, the, the flowers bloom and she just puts mm. them that's back. Cool. I love Druid Craft. I want it in real life. <laughs> <laughs> it would be good. And Red bursts out from the back door and he says, Mari! And he runs over and he like hugs you off the top stool. And she just grips the side of the bar and just braces herself and just goes, oh my God. Hi! Red, <laughs> hi. 
I I didn't think I'd see you again or this soon. No, I ended up coming <laughs> back directly uh, after you and I talked pretty much. I'm shocked you beat me here. Yeah, well, we have uh, teleportation things uh, that Jack does. Mari just takes a little notebook out and writes, teleportation, get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, let me introduce you. This is my best friend, Doran, and my best friend, Jack. And, uh, and, and Jack and Doran, this is my new best friend, Mari. Hi. Wow. Hi. Very uh, nice to meet you. I have heard about you. I have you. I have. <laughs> Doran like approaches and behind him he's dragging like two halves of this table. It's now like in <laughs> more pieces than it should be. <laughs> and he just like drops them at his backside. He's, Very nice to meet you. One of those projects that just creeps over your entire house until your whole house is the project <laughs> and there is no and Doran approaches and extends a big hand up from you know from up from down where I am. Up from his little downness. Mari's like five mm-hmm. ten, so she's got some oh. height on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's got a strong grip, so it's a good handshake. Wow, that's quite a good handshake for uh. Hmm, what are you? A water person? That's what I said. Doran. Uh, close enough. <laughs> you look awfully wet. I look less wet than I did before because I'm less nervous. Oh, Aww. it's true. Uh, when I met her, she was so wet, and we got kidnapped by Zolkin. Did I tell you any of this? I don't remember the story about Zolk. I mean, you- Zolkin. Don't tell him you saw Zolkin. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Mari, I'm so glad you're here. This is Waterdeep. Well, this is a bar, but this place is Waterdeep. This whole city. I can't wait to show you around and, yeah. and get you familiar with all these people. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. I just, I, I kind of, I think I lost some time. I, I, mm. I got a little bit lost in the way here, but now I'm here and. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned there was someone who could help me kind of get started on or get further on my journey and what I'm trying to figure oh, out. Oh, shit, yeah, that's this this guy, Jack. And I point at Jack's face like an inch from it. This is Jack. <laughs> uh, Mari had some questions about gods and stuff like that, but... Uh... Oh, gods. Hmm, interesting. Torrin is like, would you, do you guys want a booth or something? What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh right. yes. And a round of brews. Uh, just uh, ma- make it um, one, two... Three, four, okay, six brews. <laughs> six brews. <laughs> He's paying for it with his labor. I'll send tell. someone right over. As they head over, I just go over to the table because I also have mending as a cantrip, and I just sort of, Ooh. I just sort of fix the table very quietly and just head over to nice. the bar. <laughs> nice. That's going to be so useful to the amount of things Doran tries to fix. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. our bills are going way down. Your clock wasn't cuckooing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not a cuckoo clock, Doran. Yeah, well, I put one in there. <laughs> Dying bird. I just hold it up and I go, "Is this a cutting board?" <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sweet. It was. Yeah, so the four of you go over to a booth in the corner. Maybe B joins you, and then a round of drinks arrives. Mari, this is my daughter B. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you too. I feel like, and she's just looking around, and she's just kind of recounting what Red told her, and doing like a mental note and trying to count all the people. Mm-hmm. She's kind of aware that like something's a little off. And Red sees this. Yeah, we're uh, we're down. Uh, 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 a friend of ours, uh, Crayloth. No. He, uh, he passed away sadly, but. Uh, B reaches over and she puts a hand on your hand. Right? Oh, it's okay. You know, it it was a a natural part of life, and uh, honestly, he he went on his own terms, which is about the <laughs> about the best anyway anyone can go. Uh, cheers, cheers, everybody! Cheers! cheers. Uh, well, well, welcome to the Copper Cup, Mari. Yes. Is it Mari or Murray? Mari. Mari. Okay. <laughs> Mari. I'll I'll remember that for sure. To those we've met and to those we've lost. Yeah, here. Hey, hey. Cheers. So, uh, Mari, thank you for saving Red. I, that seemed first of all. Oh yeah, thanks. Huge. We, oh, we'd have missed him. You're the one that saved Red. <laughs> Oh, and it's all coming together. My reputation precedes me. Yeah, remember I said a water person saved me. <laughs> right, right. I didn't realize I was Mary here. Mari. Mari. Mar. Mari. Right, right. <laughs> okay, thank you. So many syllables. It's longer than usual that he forgot that one, so that's a compliment, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what brings you to the Copper Cup, Mari? I've been on the road for a while. Um, I have. Some questions I'm trying to figure out, but I'm mostly just trying to figure out if the gods are real. Mm. And if they are, I think I need some questions answered that only they can answer. Mm. Because I am also trying to figure some things out after some loss. 
Hey. Well, <laughs> I, um... It sounds like we kind of have a similar thing going on. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I'm going to let Jack jump in here because I'm, I'm just... <laughs> I'm going to stop talking because I, I tend to do this and I'm, I'm still learning, so... Shut up, Doran. Go ahead, Jack. Well, I mean, it's a big question, right? Um, I guess it kind of depends on on what you mean by the gods and what you mean by real and what kind of questions you have. I mean, I have so many questions, but I think the main one I need to know is, are we just pawns in this? Are we just figures bouncing around a table or do they care? Because I was always taught that they would care and that they would listen. And after, after what happened, I don't think they do. And now I need to go ask them. Oh, heavy shit. <laughs> Sorry, I realize I'm like turning into a bummer. No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> and I mean, echoing what Jack said, you know, to play devil to egg advocate, I don't believe in gods and uh, I don't really think, you know, there's anything out there. Well, I mean, <laughs> demonstrably, there are very powerful beings out there who we call gods, who are large and worshipped and grant their followers many fabulous powers and things on some level they're kind of just like us but more gods they're just like us but, but more tm <laughs> join the gods program doran finishes his uh third large tankard of ale and Already? and he sets it down in front of him and then he kind of ponders to himself listening to the conversation and then pipes up he says you know i don't think they are real not in the sense that we're talking about because uh you know we've we've met some very powerful beings but you know i i i kind of agree with you um, um mari thank you mari that um i've also experienced some pretty terrible things in my life and and i mean i don't think a god watching over my back would have uh, would have allowed those to happen i mean that's just my opinion so i mean heck we're kind of roaming around the countryside we have to we have some things we have to take care of you're, you're welcome to uh join us hey that's not a bad idea you know we're down a man anyway mari if you're looking for a little bit of a, a purpose right now especially while you're looking to answer these questions which obviously are big and uh hmm. you know fruitless then you might as well join us on our quest because uh, frankly you're Damn powerful. You should have seen the orb-sized orb that she threw into the forest. <laughs> Standard size. I think through this, while these guys have all been sort of like talking existentially and sort of trying to figure out this this broad question that has been asked and they're trying to mull it over. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mari's just been sort of sitting there and she's been sort of holding her ale and it's all sort of sweating down her hand. And then she just chugs the whole thing in one go just throws the whole thing back like a frat boy <laughs> <laughs> you said your friend got to go on his own terms the reason i'm out here is that my friends didn't and they drowned and i wasn't there to help them and i was always told that the waters were kind and that the waters gave and that the waters were home and now they aren't anymore and I don't know what to do with that. Mm. I have been told forever that the love of Eldath was something strong and pure and caring, but I don't know what that is anymore. And I don't even really know who I am anymore sometimes. Mm. So I think that I can come with. I am not a fighter, but I have been on the road for so long and I have been alone for months and a change would be nice because i haven't had anything answered yet and maybe this will get me a bit closer oh well you're not alone anymore mari <laughs> she puts a hand across the table and grabs your shoulder I... she's joining us that's it final said i don't know if we can help you find answers mari but we're we're happy to keep you company while you look at least I don't, I don't expect anyone to give me answers, but it would be nice to have some friends again. I thought Jack would, admittedly. <laughs> I think he tried. Nah, he didn't. It's okay. Even Jack don't know everything, and Red tussles your hair. <laughs> Thanks. If you're trying to meet gods, then I think we're the right people to be with. Doran's looking around the table. I mean, 
After all, we've faced dragons and giants, and we're not done yet. Yeah, to put a little context on what he's saying, uh, we all met when we headed up north to Nightstone, which is now called Donglow, but that's irrelevant. On our way to uh, a place called Goldenfields, we were picked up by a cloud giant, Castle. It was floating on a cloud, and basically, this cloud giant named Zephyro said that he had been speaking with the outer planar entities, and that we were tasked with basically reordering something called the Ordening, which is the caste system of all of the giants that exist. The part that you might find interesting is it that was the great giant god Anum who shattered the Ordening and threw all of these giants, wrecked their whole world, threw it into disarray. And, yeah, and yeah. According to Zephyros, yeah, Jack, we haven't actually heard from Anum. We only heard secondhand that it was That's from right. Anum. That's right. But if we do this and we get to meet Anum, then he might be buddies with whoever your god is. Hey, that's true. There is a giant god that we're supposed to get to talk to at some point. What's the name of your god, Mariah? Mari. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Mari. Yes. <laughs> Mari, you idiot. I'll remember. Eldath. Eldath. Okay. But yeah, after that, we've basically been cruising around Faerun trying to find our way. And, and just before you arrived, uh, we found out the location of all of the giant strongholds other than the one that we've already completed which is the hill giants and from what we've heard each of them holds one of these and red reaches into his bag of holding and pulls out a magic conch these conches when blown will bring us to the court of the storm giants hmm. and there we are hopefully going to do something we don't really know but anyway we're looking for those right now <laughs> The long and short of it is that we could use your help. Uh, B has already agreed to join us, and she is hella talented, but we have, like, five places in this world that we need to head to, defeat the giants there, and take one conch from each of these locations. And Red waves his hand, and a really shitty version of a map of Faerun just pops up on the table. <laughs> it's like drawn in crayon. So wait, where are you going? In our infinite wisdom, and, and Jack points to a spot in there, and a very nice picture of loud water pops up on Red's map a little bit less crudely. <laughs> We're going to start in the middle of winter at Loudwater and march all the way up into these mountains here, the Grey Peaks. And as Jack's talking, my shitty <laughs> map is just floating up through his again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like nudging up a little higher. And... Try and find a place called Deadstone Cleft, where the stone giant Thane is. And mm. it's a tricky hike in the middle of summer, so I hear, but we've got a local. Right, Dorian? Well, yeah, but I mean, I've only ever really heard of it. I, we, we weren't allowed to go there. It was a very dangerous spot, even for the most uh, experienced of adventuring dwarves. Uh, you see, Deadstone Cleft... Just listen to the name of it, Deadstone Cleft. I mean, what the hell? I mean, you might as well call it Dan's Peak, damn it. So basically, the stone giants, uh, and there are hill, stone, cloud, storm, frost, and fire giants. So there are six giants. We've defeated the hill giants, and that means there's only five left. Yeah, so. I mean, your favorite enemy is giants. Did you want to lay a little bit of, like, deets down? Let me you? lay a little detail down on these giant bad Let's boys. Drop some block rocking beats. <laughs> so the hill giants are here, and they're here to stay. And then gonna... Mari's ordering another beer. <laughs> Just like, I think I'm going to need another one. <laughs> yeah, we do that to people. Like the stone giants, they can meld with stone. They can go right through the ground. Uh, the cloud giants obviously live in a cloud, and their castle actually moves around a little bit. The fire giants are very, very tough, and we actually encountered one, and they were looking for a piece of a giant robot or something. I don't know about that. And the ice giants, well, we met one of him, and he was nice, but he's dead now. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the hands of a dragon. And they were like kind of Viking-y it's people. Been a rough week. No, it hasn't. There's a lot of death. <laughs> you know, just a heads up. There's a lot of death. You know, but not with us, party. Not with that we got Mari. If you're tuning into season two, be forewarned. There's a yeah. lot of death. <laughs> you have a vivify, right? Tell me you have a vivify. Mari just sort of squeezes her hair into an empty cup. It just fills up. <laughs> and Red drinks it. <laughs> oh, oh! I didn't realize that was your hair. Is that like sweat or? 
What's the analog Salty? there? Ah, no, I think it's it's just it's just water, but as to where it's coming from, I can't tell you. <laughs> that was delicious. Right. She's freshwater. Okay, so she's a fresh freshwater genasi. So we can survive off your hair if we need to. It's isotonic water, so it's like zero point nine percent salt. Yeah, it tastes kind of yeah, like yeah. lake water, like when you're in the lake and you just like taking a big mouthful and you're like, oh, and then you just like spit yeah. out a piece of fish. <laughs> yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Torin <sighs> swings by the table and he's like, "Did you guys want something to um, to eat or?" Um, yeah. Well, well I, mean, I mean, bring out some charcuterie. <laughs> sure. And how good. about a leg of lamb and some potatoes? Charcuterie for the table and lamb and potatoes for you, Doran. Yes. Of course. And three more pints of ale the, for the, the table. The usual, I guess, is, <laughs> no the, is what we're get, we're settling on, huh? As Torin is taking your order. A harried-looking man enters the copper cup. He's a human with pale skin and blonde hair, gray, worried eyes, and a scarf just kind of draped over his neck absentmindedly. He casts a glance over the entire place, taking it all in, before moving from table to table, speaking to each patron in turn. So Doran, like, under, (laughs) as he's drinking a beer, he holds the empty mug up to his face. He's like, if he wants money... Just tell him you're poor. <laughs> I don't think it's that kind of place, Dorian. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically the skinny. And honestly, I'm really glad to have you on, on team. So, I mean, we just need to decide when we want to roll out of here and, and basically start this next leg of an adventure. I was, I was hoping we could celebrate midwinter in a day or two here and then leave, you know, afterwards. It's sort of tradition to start a new thing on midwinter. That's kind of the you know, whole deal of the holiday and then I could stay I'm into that. for the holidays. And you know what, Doran, anyway, I want to get you a magic tattoo because let's not forget, uh, there's also some assassins after uh, after Doran. Yeah. Uh, we want to yeah. get you disguised. Mari's drinking another beer and she goes, do you want to say something cool? And then she uses Druidcraft again to be like, tomorrow it's going to be clear out because you can use it to predict oh, weather. Nice. Oh. <laughs> a, little, a little glowing orb. You control the weather? Oh, finally. No. I don't control. Well, I... but sunrise will be at 6.05. Oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> this pale man comes over to the table and he's like... We're poor. I'm... Sorry. <laughs> As we're glowing with magic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have you seen a, a man uh, recently with a silver hair? Very handsome. There's like some tears shining in his eyes. Torin comes back over to the table. He's like, uh, Oslid, I'm sorry. I told you we would keep an eye out for him. You're you're unnerving my patrons. You can't keep coming back in here. So you're not looking for money. Who's he talking about? R- Remy Arbor. He's my boyfriend. He, Remy wouldn't just disappear without telling me. And someone told me that they'd seen him here just a few days ago. And I don't have any fresher leads. Please. Last time I saw him, dressed sharply in his mid-60s. Where did you last see him? The last time I saw him, we were in a restaurant together, but this was almost a week ago. And someone told you you, they saw him here? That's right. Have you seen him? No. No. I think we're all kind of feeling a bit... The same, should we? Yeah, it's kind of awkward that you walked right up to our table. Let's be honest. We're all thinking the same thing. You I'm... just kind of came right up to us. We're in the middle of eating our charcuterie. I'm sorry, you guys just have like some cool weapons and stuff. It looks like you could probably be like adventurers. Yeah, we're cool. And like ready to help Fine. a guy out. Oh. Uh, we got to wait around a few days anyway. It wasn't too long ago. This was a bit of a rougher neighborhood. And, you know, hopefully the clientele, the Copper Cup is drawing, is turning things around. But maybe we can do our part a little bit while we're here. Remy lives just a few blocks away, just close to the water. It's kind of a shady part of town, and I've been there a few times, but usually we hang out close to my house uh, in the North Ward, and maybe if you could go and ask around for me, you might have a little bit more luck. Part of me almost wants to just do an insight check because I'm just do like it. a little... Oh, yeah, do, yeah, it. do it. Roll it! 23. Whoa. Hey. Nice. I know yeah. what I'm good at. Wisdom <laughs> in a tall blue package. It's insight and not anything that involves me doing a strength check. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. Join, yeah. join the team. <laughs> Based on his red rhymed eyes, it's clear this man has spent some time crying recently. Mm. 
you would ascertain that his story is correct so far. All right. At least from his perspective. It sounds like an adventure. We're in. When they saw him here last, what was he doing? Good question. Looking for a ride out of town. (laughs) (laughs) He was talking about how much he wanted to leave. (laughs) (laughs) Never return. I really hate my boyfriend. I should dump him. How much I was stalking him. And he was talking about how he could enforce his restraining order. (laughs) (laughs) He was having dinner with some people that, that I didn't recognize the description of. We'll help you. What's his address? Del- g- gives it to you. It's one. No way. One, two, three. I was just going to say Avenue. one, two, three. Fish Street. Ah, I love the Fish Street. <laughs> That's down by the uh, the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> down by Barrel. It's down by the bay. You barrel know where the watermelons way. grow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Weirdly enough, the driest part of town. <laughs> <laughs> fish Street. Uh, yeah. What the hell? Let's do it. Uh, we'll find your friend Osgood. Why don't you hang out here, get yourself a beer on us, and I guess you can eat our charcuterie. I slip a sausage in my pocket so I can eat it later. Red gives two big thumbs up and then gestures <laughs> to grab one for me too. <laughs> yeah, I grab another. I go and give Torin a quick hug and a kiss and just say, look, we'll take Doran out of your hair for a while. Thank you. I understand it's getting a little rowdy. <laughs> yeah, they're the worst, Red says really close to Torin all of a sudden. Doran, don't worry, we'll get rid of him. His like, breath smells like fish. He's like, ah. All right, bye, Torin. Talk to you soon. You keep that leg of lamb nice and warm by the fire. And as he points down at the fire, he sees the table that's now perfectly fixed and back in order. He's like, and don't... Hey, wait a minute. I did a great job at fixing that table. Once again, to our wonderful Patreon supporters, Alexander, Ruku, Lost With Two Faces, Matilda Rushing, Lida, Chelsea Chong, KR, Sky, Creature, Regan, Michelle Conn, Heather Nichols, Alexander Reed, Melanie Xian, Artistic Witch, Brian Blas, Lars, Gray, Bryn, Daniel, Tara, Doug, Mari Kaniski, Merlin, Christopher Ryan Evans, Mitchell Cadwell, Colin Burkhart, and Michael and Brianna Weber. Thank you so much! There are six big giants and they're here to stay. Better watch your back, because they're here to slay. The hill giants aren't too troublesome yet. Though they smell real bad, they're not much of a threat. The stone giants are the next on our list. They can melt through rock and they're usually pissed. Fire is hot and so is this lot. They have bad temper, so you don't want to get caught. Frosty giants are a real cool group. They enjoy ice fishing and fish head soup. The cloud giants float on castles up in the sky. If you meet our friend Zeffy, tell him we all say hi. The stone giants, we don't even know how they look. But we know that they're the baddest because the name of the book. I hope you like the song in the show, Dice shame because season two is better yet still more of the same see you soon nice (laughs) another